My name is Nick, and if you don't know me, I run 944 Rally, which is an originally questionably built off-road Porsche. Fortunately, things went as we should have expected, not well. I work on a race car team, and I've gained a lot of knowledge since joining that team, and I've traveled all over the country doing amazing automotive filmmaking. So no, I'm not a full-time internet guy. I work quite a bit, and that's why it's taken me three years to finally get back to getting this car on the road again. Originally, I rebuilt this motor myself in 2020 and had two solid years of driving out of it with some small maintenance updates. After two more years of going through two more motors, I have finally given in and come to the best in the business, 944 Safari out here in Arkansas. So the big question is, why did I come all the way out to Arkansas to rebuild this car? Well, honestly, randomly out of nowhere, this guy, <laughs> I believe his Instagram name was randosc911 or something like that, pops up and says, hey, I can come help you. And I was like, I don't trust people from the internet coming to my house. But it turns out, he sent a picture of his family, he's like, hey, I'm not a weirdo. And he actually came out and helped rebuild the head on my motor, but he, could professionally get a new head with new valves and all that rebuilt. So he and his coworker, Zach, pulled together some money and gave me a head. When we were thinking like, what if we just, me and Daniel, you know, what if we just got together, went half these on a cylinder head and went and helped this guy? <laughs> let, me, let me get into Daniel a little bit. Daniel is a very particular person. This is Daniel. He's one of those people that is extremely scientific about everything he does. He puts little paint mark dots on the parts that he's torqued down. So he knows that he's already done that bolt and he doesn't have to go to bed losing sleep. Because he will, he's like that. Uh, he's also very blunt. <laughs> I remember I asked you if I presented myself as someone that knew what they were doing or not. And you're like, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> we started 944 Safari, uh, basically just out of our passion for these cars. I started working for a master technician and was apprenticed to him for seven years. In the early days, you know, 10 years ago, there were still a large number of people driving 944s on a daily basis. So it was interesting in the fact that we got to work on lots of these cars uh, from the beginning. Job dog. Come here. This is Shop Dog. Shop Dog rides to work with me every single day. She was raised in the shop. We had her trained in the shop. Uh, and uh, all she does is sleep in front of her heater, eat food, and snore ridiculously loud. Old Shop Dog over here is a bit of a unit as well. A little bit of a kidney bean. Just sleeps all day. Here to keep company. All right, so this motor that you see behind me uh, has kind of an interesting story. Uh, it was owned by Bob Miller, who was president of PCA North America, and he always said he had won this engine block in some kind of raffle, or it was a prize. And my boss, Tom, he had always said, if Bob ever passes away, that coffee table is mine. And so Bob did end up passing away, and then a few years later, Tom ended up passing away, and so we got the engine. Um, so Tom had always said, oh, this is a turbo block, it's brand new, it's never been run, but you could never really know what was for sure a fact with Tom. It had a good story, it has a piece of us and our history. Yeah, so we basically started with a bare block for this build. We had a good crankshaft, we had a good block, good cylinders. We went to take the crank out of it and lo and behold, it had a three liter crank in it. Somebody died. Somebody died. <laughs> so that wasn't something that we could use for this project just due to the, all the other modifications that come with that. We really like the aspect of what did Porsche should do? How were they building their cars? This is my Porsche Bible. So this is a book that I've made just for 944s, um, but it basically details the 
everything that you need to know. So we've gone with the Lindsay Racing Performance camshaft, the 480-1. And this camshaft is helping us with more low-end torque, uh, just more of the feel of it. Uh, you're not actually gaining like a ton of horsepower from the camshaft, but you are gaining just a better overall feel of this car. Uh, it'll also give us just a little bit of chop uh, at an idle, which is always <laughs> nice. So the camshaft helps bring it back to life. So when you're going 70 miles an hour up a hill, the car's not just falling on its face. It, it can actually continue to accelerate up the hill, which is not normal for a lot of you know naturally aspirated 944s. They're just kind of gutless. And we have the Lindsay Racing Beehive Springs also. Um, we put the Molnar rods um, just as a great option to the factory rod, they're strong, they're balanced, they come ready to go. They have the ARP studs, there are bolts in them. Then we also put the Wasner piston, um, and we went with them just mainly because they offer the 10 6 to 1 piston. And when you start putting all of these little pieces together, it just brings the car to life. So basically when we started this build, I gave Nick pretty much a list of what we needed to purchase. And so we worked with Pelican Parts um, to order all of these individual pieces. And they, they stocked it all. We had all the small seals, the balance seals, the crank shaft seals, um, the oil seals. So not only are, are we using things that are aftermarket suppliers, but also Pelican is you know, stocking all of that genuine Porsche parts stuff. Oh boy, where do I even start with Pelican parts? See, before I even started working with them, I used them before. When I first started this project, I went to Pelican parts to get all the little bits and pieces and seals and knobs and wheels and bearings and all the hardware that I needed to do my first engine build and to bring this car back to life. Pelican Parts doesn't just carry parts for Porsches, it carries parts for BMW and Mercedes and a lot of other European, specifically German cars. Check out their easy to use website. Enter your vehicle type and year and search the parts you need. It will suggest what parts will fit for that car. Pelican Parts has been a huge help in providing everything I need for this motor to last another 100,000 miles. Pelican Parts is so much more than just a parts supplier. They're an automotive social hub. They have a massive forum with tons of people with tons of knowledge, and they have all the answers for most of the problems you'd have on your car. How-tos, fixes, suggested routes to take. The forum has it all. Pelican Parts has all the answers, probably even to life. So check out Pelican Parts. You'll find everything you need there. why there's a thousand light razor blades laying everywhere is because you can never find where you put the last one. It may seem like this is all really slow and for me it seemed like it because I didn't know but this is the process of blueprinting and it's being exact, being exact, measuring, making sure everything's within tolerance so that the engine lasts for a long time without any problems. So Daniel has an immense amount of patience, but that's quality. So the girdle has uh, three stages of torque, 20 newton meters, 50 newton meters, 90 newton meters. So I will torque as I go and I'll paint mark each step. <laughs> Do what? Did you cowboy wear the cowboy hat? hat? <laughs> wear the cowboy hat. <laughs> Arkansas a couple times. 
first time was when I brought the Boxer across the country, then up the West Coast and back across to North Carolina. I stopped in Arkansas to visit Daniel and see what he had going on. And he worked at a shop that had a lot of really exotic cars hiding in it. Day two is off to a great start. I'm at Daniel's shop. Testarossa with the one mirror. Is it time to rip, Daniel? It's time, it's to, time rip. to rip. And it seemed like this podunk little pitiful town, but there was this shop that had these amazing cars in it. And it was very contrasting and exciting in a way. It was like these hidden gems. And through this week of being here and spending time here, I have found that to be extremely true. This whole shop is hidden in kind of like this dumpy industrial area in the back of uh, a 60,000 square foot building. They show up and there's no windows, they work in peace. This place is a time warp because there's no windows, so you get lost and you don't know if it's been two hours or 12 hours. And then there's these beautiful examples of Porsches in here, all 944s and air-cooled 911s, nothing else than that. So this theme of hidden gems I have found to be very intriguing. For instance, we went to his friend's machine shop to go pick up the, the cam tower. He also was a good example of an Arkansas hidden gem. About 30 mile an hour, you can crack into it. My fat butt, it'll stand straight up. It's two now. When we put the stage four in, it'll turn 12,000 RPM. And we're making 40 horse on the pump. He's lit us out. Damn. So I did all my own bracketry on everything in here. I've done all my own bracketry on. Having your own machine shop building stuff makes it a whole lot easier. Measure it out and yep. dream, dream it up and make yep. it. A 99 SA. Yeah. We went about 100 miles an hour around the corner. And we, we did so much dumb crap in that car. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm into hot rods. I was the only Honda in the Ag parking lot. And everybody awesome. gave me a hard time. Yeah. But anytime we had to go anywhere, <laughs> all them cowboys loaded up in the red Honda. Yeah. If you would know how many cars we've spray painted at the end of the night because of running. <laughs> like, so what I'm finding in Arkansas is that there's a lot of hidden gems, like Heath's collection, Daniel's shop. There's these hidden exotic things all over Arkansas. And it's just low key people living their life, doing their thing. It ain't like LA where they're all trying to like fake everything and show off. And kind of... so apparently there's a mystery about these head studs. They seem to be too short in this block and uh, they're significantly shorter than what's on this motor, so that's not good, and we're not really sure why. Daniel's currently investigating by pulling another head stud out of another block to see if it's the block or the studs that are the problem. Right. The bolts we were sent are significantly shorter than the bolts that are needed. So, as far as the motor goes, we're looking really good. The motor, I've never seen such a clean looking motor, first of all. And uh, we had to overnight some parts because we got the wrong size of head studs. They were, we're our theory is they're either the, the crank girdle studs or st head studs for a three liter motor. Either way, they're too short. So we had to wait for the new ones to come in. We had to overnight those as well as a few other parts that had broken or we forgot or whatever. It's only got like a thousand miles, but it looked older than that. Daniel just blasted the shit out We're going to put it on camera that Nick wanted to reuse the water pump instead of getting a new one. <laughs> I've bought like three of them already. <laughs> Zach his I don't want to say apprentice, but his co-worker now. Uh, Daniel had trained Zach how to be a good mechanic. Now Zach is very much like Daniel, but Zach is goofball. We only charge talking to this thing. I'm starving over here. I give you the horse. You son of a bitch. <laughs> so I am the lead technician here at 944 Safari. I would say when I was young, I was always into art. Uh, my grandmother was an artist. I always really looked up to that. I always loved any kind of artwork, and I wanted to be an artist myself, but I was terrible at drawing and painting, so it didn't, it didn't work out. I would say really what makes me passionate is artistic creativity. I find that building you know, cars are just another 
way of expressing artwork. Before we started 944 Safari, what got it going was your car. And uh, we saw it on Instagram when it was blowing up and you were doing that thing with 996 Road Trip, Brock. We were just like, man, this is a cool car. You know, all the videos of you sliding around. And we thought like, man, we're 944 mechanics. Like, we, we should build something like that. And uh, so, you know, then we, you know, your car was broken. You know, you had that cylinder head fail. And you're like, I bet this guy could help us get off the ground if we help him. And it's been a really, really good relationship. You know? And here we are doing a full build on this car. And e look, even though it's a piece of junk, it's off. It's a cool piece of junk. Like my 944 is a piece of junk, but it's a cool piece of junk. <laughs> and it's and for the record, it's not gonna be a piece of junk when we're done. But so when we were like, we should build a, a rally car. It was actually that conversation was over Instagram DMs. He sent me a reel of your car. And then we were talking like, man, that's such a cool car. Like we should build something like that. Cause you know, not nobody else is doing it. You know, there's maybe one or two other guys that did it. I told him, I was like, yeah, we should build something like that. And the next day he texted me and he was like, hey, send me $600. For what? So he's like, for the rally car. Like, were you not serious about that? And then I was like, oh, uh, yeah, 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 I was serious about it. So I Venmoed him $600 and he found that car in his neighborhood. And we, we went and bought it and put injectors in it and it started running and that's how that started. So this car is their test mule. It, it was the first one they built um, when I started hanging out and talking with them. And it has all their experimentation on learning how these cars work off-road. So they've broken many, many things on this. Uh, today in particular, I love putting together motors. That's where I think my artistic creativity really starts like flying, you know, like, oh, that's where I get a lot of new ideas, you know, and I'm just assembling piece by piece and just watching the motor come together. Putting those motors together is so much fun. They look so funky when you only have like, you know, you got the block and it's only got like an oil cooler and a water pump on it. It's a, just such a, such a cool design. I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed putting your motor together, watching it get built. Watching these guys build this motor is extravagant. I did not know that doing motors was uh, such a science, honestly. To do it right, to make it last another 100,000 miles, following the factory specs is crucial. I did not follow factory specs. I, I followed torque specs, kind of, for most of the important bolts, but the water pump bolts, I don't know. It, it, it's just, it's been a pleasure watching this motor come together. Like, I've seen videos of it done, but I've never seen it myself. I've never been a part of building a motor from the bottom up. And I'm so grateful that it's a motor that's gonna go in my car. Oops, I almost cracked my watch. I thought went into this roof rack. All right, so I've got the main roof rack structure done. 